Welcome from, to my module two homework solutions video. Uh, I'll start it with uh, <clears throat> number one. Here we've been given a table and we've been asked to construct a uh, frequency table for this data set. The first thing we need to pay attention to is whether the data set requires a single column frequency table or does it require a grouped frequency table like the example next to it. This one uh, requires a uh, grouped frequency table because you're dealing with a lot of numbers that have no repetition so you can't just itemize them but the first one is itemizable so when you're dealing with limited number of items and you have a lot of repetition then you go with a single column frequency table meaning basically you list one of each items and then you basically count how many of those items there are in order to do that, uh, obviously, I'd start with finding the minimum value by simply typing the minimum and selecting the table. So my minimum value is 3. My maximum value is equals to max. That's the command. You select the numbers, and I'll give you the maximum. So I know that in my table, I have to itemize 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 because those are my numbers. Now I need to find out how many threes I got, how many fours I got, and so on. Well, traditionally, you just count the threes by tally marking it, but we could use a spreadsheet uh, command called count if to actually count these items. So the command goes equals count if. Then it says give me the range of values. So here's the range of values, comma. And then it says, well, what are you counting? Well, here you're counting, what's the smallest number? Are you counting three? Well, three, where is three? You, you could write three, that means I'm counting three, or you could use the cell location of three, which is in C12. So you could have write, written C12, that's where three is, or you could have just written three. Either way, we'll give you the count. There are seven of those. And you could actually verify that. That's one, two, three four, five, six, seven, three. So, you, so that's a beautiful command that gives you the answer. How many are, uh, how many fours you have? Well, you know, you could just copy this thing, control C, paste it, go back in it and change three because so now you're counting the fours. So you just change the three to a four. There you go. So now, and it's, and it's between, the, you have the table, which is between B4 and H7. Okay, so you have three fours. Let's see how many, four, again, you just copy paste, and then change the three to a five. So you have six fives. Paste it for six, go in, and change the counting from three to six, because here you're counting the sixes. Again, paste it, go in it, Go in it and change three to seven, and then paste it. Go in it and change three to counting the last number, which is eight. So there is your uh, itemizable frequency table, which is what I call it. Uh, officially, it's known as a frequency table, and also it's called a single column frequency table. And that's your frequency table. You could also obviously draw the histogram, pretty straightforward. Uh, you go to insert, and that's where all the histograms are in the chart area. And if you click, you can get a 2D histogram, 3D histogram, sideways histogram. You can do any kind of histogram you like. However, you have to remember it's a, it's a thing in Excel that if you're trying to graph a, a set of data values, you somehow need to make that title disappear otherwise it will give you two lines as a graph it's kind of strange but that's how you do it you select the table that you want to graph a histogram for uh, and let's go to histogram and do a 2d and there's your histogram of course you're supposed to connect those columns columns supposed to be connected so if you right click on one of the columns and go to format data series uh, you'll see gap width and you basically turn the gap width to zero. Uh, let's just make it smaller. There we go. So you're supposed to connect them together like that. And there's your histogram. And this is a frequency table. And you can give it a nice title. 
uh, and you could even choose a different version or a different setup or a different graphic user interface and you could also make the title bold and change the color of the title as you wish there's your frequency table then you can put the X back in there's the frequency table and there's the frequency uh, histogram and there's the table all right let's uh, see how it's done with a grouped frequency table that requires a bit more work uh, and you, there's no manual command you could use in Excel to do it so you just have to basically count how many of each item there is in each group the difference between a group frequency table and a single column frequency table is that a group frequency table you itemize you put the group data values into groups of values not into individual values if you wanted to do a single column frequency table here it would defeat the purpose because you'd have a lot of rows because a lot of different numbers here. it would make sense to do one of these so that's why you do a grouped frequency table which is made out of classes those are the range of values that you're going to choose and the frequencies which is their count now again you always want to start with the minimum and maximum so you know what you're working with oops minimum and maximum let me calculate that your minimum value is zero your max value is 99 so we're going from 0 to 100 so let's break this into groups uh, one important thing for you to pay attention to and adhere to is that the length or the class width or the width of each class you select must be uniform and the same throughout the table and uh, there is no limit on the number of classes subjective process but in this course we're going to limit them to four to six classes so recall and remember that every time I'm asking you to construct a grouped frequency table here, you have to use somewhere from four to six classes. Excellent. So, so, so let's start with uh, figuring out my classes, zero to a hundred. So I could do zero to twenty, twenty to forty, forty to sixty, sixty to eighty. And since 99 is my lowest, the highest value, I could just go to 80 to 100 and that will cover it. If I had 100 in here, I had to go from 100 to 120. Because if you, and why do I do that? Because we always use the upper class limit to do the counting. In other words, you notice that in order for me to make sure that the columns are connected when I create my histograms, I have to do 0 to 20 and then I have to start from 20 so there won't be a gap. But then there'll be a double counting issue as to well, which class do you use to classify all the 20s into. And uh, for that one, we just have a convention in this course that uh, if you do that, you always use the upper class limit to do the counting. And 0 is known as the lower class limit. 20 is known as the upper class limit. And you always use the lower class include the lower class limit and you never use the upper class limit so you write 0 to 20 20 to 40 to preserve the fact that the columns in the histograms when you create it are connected but then to avoid the double dipping you only count the numbers from 0 to 19 one number less than the upper class limit so you write 0 to 20 20 to 40 to preserve the lack of the gap but then in order to count and in order to avoid double dipping you have to count 0 to 19, 20 to 39, 40 to 59, 60 to 79, 80 to 99. Never use the upper class limit. And that would avoid the double dipping scenario. Now, how do I know how many numbers are from 0? And, and, and I'm staying, by the way, within 6 um, classes. Now, is that the only way you could have broken it up? No. You could have done 0 to, I don't know, 0 to 25. Uh, you could have done 25 to 50, as long as your class widths are the same. You could have done 50 to 75, and then you could have done 75 to 100. Sorry, 75 to 90. Uh, let's see, and then 90 to 105. Or you could have done 0 to 30, uh, 30 to 60, uh, 60 to 90. 
90 to 120. You could have done that, and again, you'd have been okay because you're staying within four to six classes. I'm just going to go initially with, I like that, zero to 20 the best, so it's a personal choice. Uh, all three would have been correct. Zero to 20, 20 to 40, uh, 40 to 60, 60 to 80, and 80 to 100. Now, how do I count how many numbers are between 0 to 20? So remember, you're counting here 0 to 19 in reality. Uh, here you're counting 20 to 39. Here you're counting 40 to uh, 59. So don't forget that. Here you're counting 60 to 79. And here you're counting 80 to 99. So don't forget, this is in reality what you're counting. And I'm going to turn it into some other color. Let's see, we'll go with that. All right, now, what's the count? How many numbers are from 0 to 19? Well, you could count them manually here. I mean, uh, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you can count it like that, but that'll take a while. So my record, and there is no command you could use, like, as simple as count if to do it. So I think the easiest way to do this would be to just try to organize these numbers in an increasing fashion, and then it'll be easy for me to count these. So if I organize all of these numbers in a row, I mean in the column, so I'm going to bring it and organize it here in the column, copy here, and then I'm going to grab the second one, go to the boundary, right-click, and drag it here, and copy it. And then I'm going to bring the next one and copy it. And I'm going to bring the last column down here, copy. All right, so I have all my numbers here. The first thing I want to do is I want to organize them in an increasing order. So I go to the funnel looking thing in the editing uh, tab here. And it says sort smallest to largest. It says expand the selection. Let's see if we'll do it. No, it doesn't like to do it because there's other uh, numbers here. So let me see if I can just grab this, copy it, go to a new sheet, paste it, and then organize them in, a, in an increasing order here, and then take it back. There we go. See, it increased it. I mean, it organized it in an increasing order. So I'm just going to grab this now, copy it, and then go back to my answer sheet and then paste it here. Actually, I'll just paste it here, far away from it all. And then just paste it there, there we go. So I don't need this number right there, I can get rid of it. So now, I have the numbers organized in an alphabetical, I mean in an increasing order here. Uh, let me get rid of the color, so now I'm ready to count. So now it's easy, zero to 19, you see you just come down to 19 there. That's 18, so 0 to 19 is there. That's the first column row count. The second row is 20 to 39. So there is my numbers in my second group, 20 to 39. And then the next one is 40 to 59. So there it is. So I take anything after 59 away to the other column. Uh, and then it's uh, 60 to 79, which I go to 78 one less than that and then the last one is 80 to 99 and it's right there so you see it's easy for me to count them here so now if somebody says how many numbers are between 0 to 19 in a 0 to 20 class uh, it's just right there 0 to 8 19 so there are six numbers there so I could just type six here so that's how you count the group frequency table uh, numbers between 20 to 39 same Numbers between 40 and 59, there's three of those. Easy to count them. See how easy it is to count if you have them all lined up here, and the other two apparently are sixes each. So it's a very uniform frequency table. And there is your frequency table, grouped frequency table. I'll use another color here. Uh, let's use green. We haven't used that. Oops, two more. And there's my frequency table in green. And if I wanted to draw the histogram, of course I can make the titles bold. I can do a histogram. Here you don't need to delete anything because it's a range of values. If it's a single number, you have to delete the title to graph it on Excel. And don't ask me why. So you select it. You go to insert. 
you go to histogram and this time I'll do a 3D right click to make sure the col columns are connected format data series and make the gap width zero actually a little bit of gap will be nice there you go just so you know where the disconnect is and there's your frequency table uh, and there is your histogram for it so that's how you construct a frequency table and that's how you construct its histogram here are the classes 0 to 20 20 to 40 40 to 60 and these are the counts it goes up to 6 this one goes up to 3 fantastic so that's how you do problem number one let's move on to problem number two